Welcome once again to your weekly update from the City of New Hope. Time to chat again with the mayor to find out what's new in the city and what's coming up. Welcome, Mayor Hempkin. How are you today? Cold. Yes, I'm, I'm I got cold. it. And we're <laughs> going to wanna... talk about a few things related to cold, but we do have a few spring notes within the update today, we so stay do. tuned for that. All right, well, let's begin with what everyone's talking about this time of the year and with what just happened in Iowa. We have election year, and there's a lot going on and a lot residents need to know. Give us some of the basic information. Well, the uh, you know they have federal, state, and local elections, but right now just the primaries on February or on March fifth are coming up. You can start to vote absentee beginning on the nineteenth of January, and you can either go online and get your absentee ballot, or you can go into City Hall and get that. If you go into City Hall, make sure you bring your driver's license with a current address. And if you don't have that, you can bring a utility bill and an old driver's license with your picture on it. They just need to identify that that's you and that you live in New Hope. So that voting starts at eight o'clock on the 19th of January. If you choose to do that, you'll have absentee balloting all through January, starting in February. Um, I think it's February 15th. You can actually go into City Hall and do, do direct voting. That means you fill out the application, you put it in the machine yourself. Right. That'll start on the, the 16th of February to vote for that. But you can go online, you can go into MM Votes to get your ballot if you'd rather do that, absentee. It's just so important to vote. All right, lots of directions there, and then both you see it there on the bottom of the screen, .org. Let's talk about community development, a number of items here to update residents on. And one thing that is coming up is something called Codes and Standards. Help us understand a little more of what this is and what the event is. Well, the Planning Commission has a subdivision to it, and that's called the Codes and Standards. And what they do is they look at our ordinances, our, our city codes, uh, just the standards that we have, and every now and then they meet separately to go over this stuff. They're going to meet on the 31st of January at 5.30. Now that's open to the public, but they do not accept public comments at that time. It's just because they need to be talking about this. The I'm going to read this because the list is just fascinating to me. So they're going to talk about uh, boarded houses, open outdoor storage at churches, the definition of a fence, uh, in-home daycares, semi-trailer parking, driving over curbing, parking lot permits, and the definition of trade schools. Mm -hmm. So they've got a full agenda to talk about. But if you're just interested, it's always yeah. kind of interesting to go and, and watch how that process goes. Typically what happens is the codes and standards makes recommendations to the planning commission. They will then look at it and they make recommendations to the city council. And if we uh, choose to, we can vote yes or no on the recommendations that they give us. They do a lot of that background work for us so that we don't have to do it. All right, an interesting process. Stop by if you'd like to find out more. Let's talk about the street banners. We've been previewing them and now we get our first look at them. So here are what the banners will look like. Again, remind us where these will go and who the big partner is. Well, they will go on uh, 42nd and Xylon 2. And they'll go on those big light posts that go. So we worked with Hennepin County, their graphic artists, and we got these banners from one of the people in the class. You don't want a lot of stuff on those banners because people don't want, they're not stopping to read them, by the right. way. They're just driving by. So they have to be kind of minimalistic and the colors have to be good. So now we've now that we've decided on the banners, they went to the printer. They should have them back by the end of February. And my, my community development guys and the public works guys do not want to put them up in the winter. So they'll go up in the spring. As Understand. As they stay. We get it. Scattered site housing, one property to update residents on. That is 4965 Winnetka. Some lot split action going on there, and it involves quite a bit of a process, doesn't it? Well, I thought this would be easy. Just draw a line, cut the lot in half, you're good. Well, both these houses now will face... That it, it was a double lot. So they they had it surveyed. The survey's done. Both the houses will face 50th. So they'll need new addresses. One will be 7901 and one will be 7911. Because we're actually adding one new address of that, we, we the city, has to pay uh, a dedication, a park dedication fee. So the Economic Development Authority will actually transfer money to a park dedication fee 
for that extra address. Now, the other thing that happens is we have to send that into Hennepin County so they know that there's another address going on there. We probably won't market those two lots to developers till spring because that's a better time to do that. Mm -hmm. So they'll just kind of sit where they are for now. But there's stuff going on that we don't even know about. All right. We're more informed now. Something coming up here that you might want to get on your calendar is a business networking group. Remind us when the next meeting is and what the topic is. Well, that next meeting is going to be the 7th of February at 830 in the morning. It's hosted by Remax uh, Real Estate. They're having a guy named Eric Myers come in from the Minneapolis Area Director of Government Affairs. I'm guessing it's government affairs involved with housing. So they'll come in. Uh, this is a free meeting. Uh, it's 8.30 to 9.30. You really learn a lot from these people that come in. And the other thing, you learn about all the businesses that are in New Hope and Crystal because we're doing the combined meeting now with them. All right. One final note under community development is a property we have been watching and keeping you updated on, and that is on the corner of Bass Lake Road and Winnetka. What is the latest? Well, that's the gas station. So the outside is looking really, really good. They're still doing some work inside. They got rid of the mechanics bay, and now it's just a big, I want to say a convenience store, but it's more than that. They're going to have a, a kitchen there so you can pick up some hot food. Uh, they'll have a coffee bar there and you can always get gas. Now they're telling me sometime before the end of next month, they'll be open. So a lot of stuff to, to figure out. And then, of course, they've got to order stock to get in there. Um, I'll let you know as soon as I know when they have a date to open. Very good. Let's hop to the police department. A couple updates here. One is Meals on Wheels. The other is a faith and police luncheon. Tell us more about both of those. Well, you know, we've been delivering Meals on Wheels now for about a year, and, and the residents just love that. So they go over to Crystal, pick up the meals there, and they have um, usually like five or six addresses that they deliver them to. And the residents that get them are so excited to see the police officers there. Now, the other one is my police chief and one of my officers went to a police and faith luncheon. They do that a lot with all the other cities. All of the police departments are so interconnected. When there's an emergency, they all just show up. And, and it's really good that they're talking to each other outside of their normal uh, routes and the work that they do. So mm -hmm. that's exciting. Let's head to Public Works. And here is the really chilly part of the update. There was something that happened under the ground that these guys had to jump into action on. What was it? Well, I'm going to probably whisper this because last <laughs> week I said we had didn't have any water main breaks. About three minutes after my phone rang and we had two last week. So I didn't dare ask them if we had any more because it, it looks like it was bad luck for me. But bless their hearts for digging. They dig a big hole, they go down in that hole and it's cold and it's wet and it's damp and fix that water main, just bless their hearts for that. So not only are they doing that, they had to fix a lift station too in this cold. So they've been busy. And they are out there playing with the little bit of snow we have as well. So that's on their radar and they're prepared for whatever comes, correct? They, they are. You know, they use chemicals on the streets, but if it gets really cold, the chemicals don't work. And then they have to actually plow. So it seems silly to be plowing. But if you drive over that snow and not get it up, uh, it really makes a mess later on. So mm -hmm. they are, they're keeping the plows ready to go they have people on call in case it does snow they're watching the weather on a regular basis and trust me they'll be out whenever we need them here's another update of one of their buildings the public works facility phase two expansion we've been keeping you up to date and it looks like things are progressing bring us up to date there well we got the bids back in and, and actually it was like 1.2 million dollars less than the estimated bid so that was a really good thing. And I asked them why. And they said, well, the materials were a little bit cheaper. A lot of the contractors are lining up their business, their work now for 2024. And so we got a, a really good bid. I want to remind people that we're not bonding. We had said when we built the pool, we would not bond, borrow, another word for that, for mm -hmm. 10 years. So we've been saving for this expansion. So between that and some transferring of internal funds, we're able to do this without of bonding for it anymore. So they're thinking they're going to start as soon as spring comes and they should be done in 2024 with that expansion. 
Let's move ahead to Park and Rec. A lot going on here. First, we have some of the younger ones of the New Hope community out there being busy. The Tumblers gymnastics team and also the dancers. They are at it and getting ready for some bigger competition, it sounds like. So our Tumblers, Tumbler team one and two, went down to Fairbolt and they also went to, oh, I don't know, some Rockford. Rockford. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently they did very well. They had some really good showings. I don't know what Tumblr 1 and 2 does, but they had some really good showings. Now, the dance teams uh, took a break over the Christmas holidays, but now they're back uh, getting ready for their recital in May. The other thing that's happening is you can sign up for the DX National Dance Competition. That's in June. And this is the time to do that. They can do that online. Go into Park and Rec online. If you can't find it, you can always call City Hall and they'll connect you with somebody that'll help you get that. So if you want to register for that, now's the time to do it. And there's the website, newhopemn.gov. You can find out more about that. You can also find out about outdoor skating rinks. We've been chuckling about this for the last month of when will it ever come? Now it's really cold, but it's still going to take a little time. <laughs> well, it's not like making ice cubes in your right. refrigerator. Yeah. It, they, they put down a fine spray and it has to freeze and then they come back and put down another. It, so it takes many days to get that nice ice built up. When I called and asked, they thought maybe they'd have at least one open by the end of this week. It's pretty cold out there, though. So what they did suggest to me is have people look on the website. They should be able to see when they're going to open. They'll give you an estimated time when they're going to, in the hours that they'll be open. And more importantly, when the warming houses will be open. Very nice. It does seem like an odd time to talk about trees in the city of New Hope, but it's been an ongoing topic with the Emerald Ash Borer. What is the process right now that's going on and how are you trying to stay a little ahead of the game here? Well, right now what they're doing is they're identifying the trees that are on Hennepin County right of ways. And they're also identifying the trees on commercial property that need to come down. Now, again, we only take down trees on public land, right. on private land. Um, we're, we're looking at ways to maybe help residents to get those trees down because that's expensive to do that. So these trees are being tagged. Um, we did renew the contract with the tree arborists that cut them down. I don't know if they'll be doing any cutting down now any more this year. But the other thing that's happening is um, they're starting to send out the letters for the tree replacement. So if you get a letter, uh, make sure you look at the trees that they're offering to replace and get that back in as soon as you can, because that's how they schedule the planting. Mm -hmm. If you think you're supposed to get a tree and you don't get a, a letter in the next month, you need to call City Hall and tell them you didn't get a letter. And things happen, names and addresses get mixed. We don't want you to miss getting that, that tree replacement. Mm -hmm. One other note related to trees is the city does a lot of work as we've been talking about, and they get recognized for that work. Tell us about that process of how they're recognized on a national level and state level. Well, there's something called Tree City USA. Mm -hmm. So we applied for that and were accepted. And now we're waiting for the Arbor Association. That's a, a national. And then we'll get that. And of course, we put up signs that say we're a tree city. Not sure we have quite as many trees as we used to have, but we will. <laughs> Let's move ahead to the golf course and give you a little update here. And here's a question for you. What does the golf course and babies have to do with each other? The mayor has the answer. <laughs> I do. We had two <laughs> baby showers there this weekend. Apparently, that's a real hot spot to, to have something where you're inviting a bunch of people. You don't have to clean your house. You don't have to clean the bathroom. Mm -hmm. They just come in there. You can bring in your own food. So if you're thinking of, of renting the clubhouse, now is the time to do that. The other thing that's happening at the golf course, if it ever snows again, right. is winter golf. That's going to be the 27th of January from 11 to 2. They're asking people to call and make a tea time, but you really don't have to. Um, you can just show up and they'll just kind of fit you in. It's such a fun day. And then you go on the patio and you cook s'mores. And it, it's just a, a fun winter activity. Hopefully yeah. it won't be three below. That's right. Hopefully a little bit warmer weather with a little bit of snow. Let's head over to the ice arena and give you an update. And if you noticed a few more cars in that area over this past weekend, you are right. Mayor, everyone was there. It was. Well, everybody with the under 10 and under 12 girls. 
There were 37 games uh, played over this last weekend. There was a big tournament called Knockdown in New Hope. And so this was a big young girls uh, hockey tournament. And it was a big hit, and there were a lot of cars. So it was really, really busy. They didn't have any time for open open uh, skating this last weekend. So I'm always reminding people, Friday and Sundays is open skating, but you have to go online to look because you yeah. never know when there's a tournament or there's something else going on. There is a private party that's renting the, the ice arena on Thursday, but it'll be during the day like 11 to to 12 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Also Friday afternoon is the uh, men's adult men's hockey. Right. And again, the, the goalies play for free. I don't know why, but if you're interested in that, go again, go online and see what time that is. All right. Here's that moment of spring. We promised at the beginning of the program to talk about warmer weather coming here is a sure sign. The aquatic park is in need of people already. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's three below and there's accepting applications for next summer. You know, it takes a long time to actually get those applications, go through them, um, hire the, the people that are working there and do the training and all that other stuff. So when I asked him, I said, are you sure that's not a misprint? No, it's not. They're mm -hmm. actually accepting applications. So again, you can go online under jobs and apply online. Again, if you get stuck, Call and ask for the Park and Rec Department, and they'll guide you through that. All right, get signed up. Human resources, speaking of people getting jobs in the city, we want to talk a little bit about the city clerk treasurer position and also a police clerk vacancy. Give us an update on how those processes are going. Typically in, in, the, in cities, you have to uh, post internally. And if you don't get two qualified candidates, then you can go to the outside and post the job. For the city clerk job, we actually got two qualified candidates internally. So those two will be interviewed. Possibly we'll hire one of those two. So that position will not go outside. Now the police clerk position, that one we did not get two qualified candidates. It went outside. We've got just a ton of people applying for that. They narrowed that down to four and they were interviewing those four this week. So we should have a new police clerk by the end of the week. Or at least the name of one. Very good. We'll keep people up to date. Now to uh, what a lot of people maybe have been doing is going out and helping their neighbors when it's been so cold here. And this is a perfect lead into the Good Citizenship Award. Tell us about this award again, the process to get involved. Well, this has been around since 2011. It kind of went by the wayside after two or three years. But we're trying to bring it back because we really think it's important. So there's all those wonderful neighbors that are snow blowing your driveway, bringing your garbage cans up to your house, bringing them down, uh, just doing those little things. And we really want to recognize them. So they have until the 31st, the 31st of January to, uh, to uh, recognize somebody for a good citizenship award. And they can do that by going online. Again, uh, the, the application is very simple to fill out and it's pretty easy to do that. And then you can just send it back in online again. And if you get stuck, call City Hall and they'll help you with that. And there's that website, newhopemn.gov. And just to check here, I have that that is open till March 31st actually with the good oh. citizenship. But this yeah. next one is open to January 31st that you just mentioned. And that's some commissions have openings. Where can people step up and serve? So the Human Rights Commission, and the Citizens Advisory Commission are both looking for people to serve. These are uh, volunteer jobs, they're not paid, but they really do get involved in the city operations and we need them desperately. So you have until, um, you just told me to. <laughs> January 31st, 31st for that, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. The 31st of January to apply for them. And then what'll happen is the city council will interview them and appoint them to the, the two commissions. But, it's really a, a nice place to be. And you get the Friday memo every week. Mm -hmm. So you see what's going on in the city. It's just a, a nice awareness of what's going on. Very good. All right. It has been cold, as we all know. And here's a great way that the city has helped you out to pay some bills without getting out of your car. How does this work? Well, two locations. Okay. One of them, the, the, one used to be at Public Works. And you'd actually have to get out of your car and go to the building and put your, well, now there's two at City Hall. 
One of them, you actually get out of your car and you go to the building and there's a little mail slot right by the trash container, but don't put it in the trash, put it in the slot. The other one is um, you can drive up to it and if you put your car so that it's actually facing east, if you're the driver, you don't have to get out of the car. If your passenger's going to, then you want to have the car facing west. And so that's right there in the drive-by aisle. Mm -hmm. You can put your bill in there and don't have to get out of your car. What could be easier? A final note to pass along something coming up that you might want to think about. Empower Inclusion Summer Internship Opportunity. Something new that this is the first time we've talked about it. Help us understand this a little bit more. Well, this is happening all over Hennepin County. And the, the other word for that is growth through opportunity. And what it is, is, is in a program for just people, adults with disabilities, so they can get some idea and some work experience. So what they'll do is, is do an internship at City Hall or with Public Works, um, just or with the police department to get an idea of what goes on and what they can do. Uh, there's a lot of jobs that uh, we need interns to help with, uh, things like filing, uh, just getting things ready that we need. So it's a good opportunity. They have until the 25th of February to apply for that. So again, go online and look for that. If you can't find it, call the, the non-emergency police department number or just the city hall phone number and they'll get you to the non-emergency police department number. Just a wonderful opportunity yep. that we're offering. All right, a wealth of information passed along today. You do need the website today to check all of this out, newhopemn.gov, the place to go and stick with us for a second here. We're going to have a list of some of the things the mayor mentioned and a few other things happening in the city that you might want to get involved in. Mayor, thanks again for your time. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Dave. Stay warm. Learn more about the connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.